watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. Today we'll be talking to Drs. Jennifer Selby and Aisha Akinturk from the Department of Religious Studies in Memorial University, which is in Newfoundland and Labrador, about a new project documenting the history of Muslims in Newfoundland and Labrador. But first, some news headlines. Pope Francis to visit Canada amongst calls from reconciliation. University of Toronto professors develop chemical formula to combat COVID. Edmonton's first mayor of colour sworn into office today. School district of New Jersey suspends a TIS assistant teacher for Islamophobic remark. And Daesh attacks in Iraq raise death toll to 15. And now the details. The Vatican announced in a statement today that Pope Francis has accepted the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops invitation to visit Canada. The Pope's visit comes amongst increased calls for reconciliation in Canada after mass grave sites were discovered in Kamloops, British Columbia. Kamloops was formerly home to a residential school managed by the Catholic Church. The last residential school shut down in 1996. Students were forcibly removed from their homes and placed in these schools where they were subject to physical and sexual abuses. Indigenous communities are still awaiting a formal apology from the Pope. Pedro Valiente and Philip Kim have developed a chemical formula to overcome SARS and COVID, along with its multiple variants. The formula uses D-peptides that will react with the virus to halt infections. Its success in the lab, low cost of creation and long lifespan make the chemical formula an efficient solution against COVID. According to the University of Toronto, the researchers can develop this formula into a nasal spray that can be used in low-income countries to combat COVID. The formula is effective against the different variants of COVID as well, including those found in the United Kingdom, South Africa and Brazil. Majid Sohi was sworn into the mayoral office of Edmonton today. Sohi is Edmonton's first mayor of South Asian origin. He immigrated to Canada from Punjab in 1982 when he was 18 years old. Sohi was sworn in alongside his 12 councillors, of which eight are women. In his ceremony, he celebrated the diversity present on Edmonton's new city council. So he also announced a motion to City Council to formulate an anti-racism strategy. Edmonton has seen a rise in targeted attacks recently. Within the last year, there have been more than five reports of Black Canadian, Black Canadian Muslims being the target of street harassment. An assistant teacher at Richfield School in New Jersey has been suspended following an Islamophobic comment made in class. Mohammed Zubi, a Muslim American high school senior with an Arab background, raised his hand in class to ask for more time on an assignment. The assistant teacher responded to his request by saying, we don't negotiate with terrorists. In addition to placing the teacher on suspension, the school board will fully investigate the incident. Zubi, who was not even born at the time of 9-11, was deeply shocked and hurt by the comment and remained home for almost a week. According to a local medical source, the death toll from a Daesh attack in eastern Iraq has risen to 15 today. Daesh is the Arabic word used to refer to ISIS. Daesh militants had attacked the village al-Rashad in Diyala province with sniper rifles and machine guns yesterday evening. The medical source who spoke on condition of anonymity said 13 other people were injured in the attack. The attackers had fled the scene unscathed. Meanwhile, Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadami ordered the army to increase intelligence gathering efforts to help avoid similar attacks. Within the past few months, Daesh have escalated their attacks in a handful of areas known as the Triangle of Death. That's it for the news. And now our interview with Drs. Jennifer Selby and Dr. and Aisha Akinturk about Muslim history in Newfoundland and Labrador. 
Welcome to the show, Drs. Jennifer and Aisha. Hi, Kathy. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us. Now it's Islamic History Month in Canada, so we've been interviewing different people across the across the provinces about the Muslim the Muslim history in their province, and we've made it to Newfoundland and Labrador. So, can we start out with uh, Dr. Jennifer telling us just what do we know already about Muslim history in Newfoundland and Labrador? Well, this is uh, actually Kathy. What inspired um, Dr. Kinturk and I to launch into this project? We had a kind of an idea of um, uh, a first professor in the Department of Physics at Memorial University, the province's only university, who settled here in 1964. Um, and uh, But actually, as we have done some digging, we found all kinds of other folks who arrived earlier than that. Um, also, as part of our project, we have had some conversation and discussions with Dr. Aqua Cooper at Dalhousie University, who suggests that actually there may have been um, black Muslims who were part of the transatlantic slave trade, who in all likelihood have been, um, had, had been in our province for even centuries before the 1960s, when we had the first kind of folks settle here. Right. So Dr. Aisha, Dr. Jennifer just mentioned a project that you've, that you've co-launched. Tell us a little bit about the project. Well, that project uh, came out of our conversations with Dr. Selby and also some other uh, friends here. Um, so we decided that uh, we found out that there's so little archival research that has been done so far about uh, Newfoundland Muslims. Uh, what we knew so far was limited to the archival records of the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, some anecdotal information here and there, um, but nothing really uh, as a research, archival research. So we decided that there is such a great need uh, to start such a project uh, because uh, the lack of archival research about the long history of Newfoundland Muslims creates a misperception about uh, the local Muslim community here. Um, the larger community perceives us uh, as members of a newcomer transient, transient uh, religious minority, which is not right. the case. We had a long I history. That, and I know that one of, the most, one of the most famous researchers who pioneered this really, the story of Muslims in Canada, and he wasn't even a historian, Dawood Hamdani. I believe he started out in Newfoundland. Is that right, Dr. Aisha? Yes, yes. Church yes. Was, uh, we were pleasantly surprised that he came here in early 1960s to do his master's in economics at Memorial University. And recently, uh, as you may know, there is a, a book published by uh, Hogman, uh, Mr. Hogman, and uh, he interviewed uh, Dr. Hamdani before his passing away. Uh, and uh, there is a section about Dr. Hamdani's uh, experience, lived experiences as a Newfoundland uh, Muslim. And he recalls his experience as a lonely one because there were not many around uh, at that time. Right. Uh, but this was a nice, uh, pleasant finding of our research. Well, Dr. Jennifer, Dr. Aisha has just briefly introduced, introduced us to the project and what inspired it. I, I, can you just, we haven't heard the proper formal name of the project. Uh, if you could tell us that and then I'll ask you a follow-up question. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. So it's called the Muslim Narratives and Lives in Newfoundland and Labrador Community Project. And it's been sponsored by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada in a, what's called a Partnership Engage Grant. And uh, we have a website, so check us out there too, um, nlmuslimlives.ca, um, and also an Instagram page where our student team has been working hard to share some of our early findings uh, about uh, October's Islamic History Month. So you mentioned uh, that, uh, I think it was Dr. Aisha who'd mentioned that there were, the, that the only resources really were with the archives of the association there. I can't remember what you called it, the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. Correct. Yes. It's a, it's a not very usual for Muslim organizations to be that organized. So uh, tell us about the archives, uh, Dr. Aisha. Uh, actually, uh, we were uh, lucky that uh, some of the early Newfoundland Muslims who were the founding members of the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, they happen to be uh, some uh, great individuals who were thinking archivally. So uh, during the process of establishing their association, building their own mosque, uh, they brought together all the archival records 
and then uh, put it on, at their website. So today we have a huge archival document uh, that uh, reports all the processes uh, in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, we also have an archival uh, video documenting the phases of mass construction. So thanks to these uh, pioneers, uh, we were able to reach some of the uh, crucial information about the history of Newfoundland Muslims. But I think our project will uh, provide some of the missing pieces, such as uh, the oral histories of these early uh, Muslims, who they were, when they came here, how long they stayed here, how has been uh, their lived experience as a Newfoundland Muslim. Um, so I think uh, there are so many uh, missing uh, pieces of that puzzle and uh, in this project we are happy to bring some of them uh, to the light. Now you mentioned Dr Jennifer that this was funded by the Social Science Research Council. We, we interviewed Dr Murray um, on the show actually about his book and he had started doing oral histories in 1979 and he said at the time there wasn't a great interest in, in Muslim history in Canada. So. Did you find it difficult to get this grant accepted? And um, okay, I'll, I'll ask you a follow up. Did you find it difficult sure. to get this grant accepted? Uh, we were fortunate. We we were successful. But um, I've definitely noted, as you know, um, Kathy, in your own scholarly work, we've recently collaborated on an overview looking at the scholarship on Muslims and Islam in Canada. And in that scholarship, it's really quite striking how little historical research has been conducted. Daoud Hamdani, an economist and statistician, is really uh, the academic who has done mostly statistical work on that early history. So there's definitely was a, a really significant gap. Um, and I, I think in part that gap can be explained by the lack of archival materials but also probably other aspects, uh, the early whitewashing of, um, of Muslims who settled in Canada, Islamophobia, um, all kinds of reasons why this, this area of study has not been elaborated until now. And what do you think it is about now that's different from then? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that, I mean, certainly I can't speak for all of Canada, but in our own community here, we've been really lucky to have uh, great partners and relationships that have been built on kind of long lasting um, friendships and also uh, all collaborations. We're so fortunate to have as one of our partners, the uh, Queen Elizabeth II Ar Archives and Special Collections at Memorial University is one of our partners. And they also, the head archivist Colleen Quigley, uh, participated in a, a conference on Islamophobia in the province that I co-organized with Dr. Sobia Sheikh. And she just, you know, mentioned, uh, wow, you know, our, our own archival holdings are so homogenous in our province. And so there was a real desire from all kinds of folks, including Aisha, the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, to work really hard, not only to gather, but we're also, as um, Aisha mentioned, creating archival materials. Right. And Dr. Aisha, you mentioned oral histories. Now, I guess we can't go back 400 years and interview perhaps if there were black Muslims in the province. So who who will the oral histories be with? Uh, well, um, we try to reach out first and foremost, uh, the, our seniors, the elders of our community. Uh, so we were able to interview so far uh, 20 uh, Newfoundland Muslims with long lived experiences uh, here in this province. Uh, so uh, their interviews, recordings, and transcripts will become part of this Muslim archive that we are trying to create uh, at Queen Elizabeth Library at Memorial University. Uh, in addition to that, uh, their archival donations uh, will become uh, part of that archive. Uh, we are also seeking uh, archival donations from other Muslims uh, who we didn't have a chance to interview because uh, our aim is, is to make this uh, Newfoundland Muslims archive a living archive. So even if we didn't have a chance to interview everybody, um, the rest of the Muslim community and the future generations are more than welcome uh, to approach uh, the archives at Memorial University and don donate their archival items. And, you know, something like an archives and history, it can seem very abstract and irrelevant to the daily struggles and or maybe even boring. So, Dr. <laughs> Jennifer, how has the Muslim community reacted to, to this project? 
Yeah, no, we've been, um, as usual, very heartened by how open folks are. Um, definitely one of our projects in this whole project, um, and also learning ourselves about the importance of thinking archivally. As um, one of the head archivists at the Muslims in Canada project, uh, Moksha, she is like really in instilled in us. So just how important that um, that archives are really political spaces. And we have this amazing opportunity to reshape or at least contribute to new knowledge um, to there and create new narratives um, about Muslim lives in Newfoundland and Labrador. So I think it's actually no accident that this project really stemmed from a longstanding three-year project, uh, as I mentioned before, that I I was conducting with another colleague around Islamophobia in the province. So it might seem like a kind of benign um, old photos in your basement uh, project, but it does have significant political implications. Well, um, unfortunately, we don't have time to delve into that much more. I, I, I think, I, Dr. Aisha, you wanted to just have a quick couple of words as we finish off. Yes, uh, just as it, responding to your earlier question, I think the interest of the Muslim community has been very uh, positive, very uh, uh, encouraging. And I think one of the reasons is uh, they are now in a stage to reclaim uh, their history, their heritage, and to make part of that uh, common knowledge out there. Thank you. Well, thank you both for taking the time to share with us on the show. We encourage everyone to go and have a look at, at the website. We'll try and post the link. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. That's it from us. You've been watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay safe and God bless.